Well, here we are. You made it this far. How do we convert ordinary, maybe even boring images into something a little bit more interesting to look at? How do we convert uh, a regular snapshot into maybe even a work of art? Composition. Composition is the placement of objects uh, in a work of art. Specifically in photography, it is the arrangement of these elements within your frame, uh, within your viewfinder. When you put your camera up to your eye and you look through the viewfinder, where are you pointing your camera? Um, what angle? Are you going a little closer or are you stepping a little bit further back? A little to the left, a little to the right. All of that is composition. Okay, And within composition, there are some rules and some guidelines that can help you transform that ordinary snapshot into something a little bit more interesting to look at. So let's take a look at what some of these guidelines are. First one is something called rule of thirds. And it's pretty simple idea. If you break your frame down into thirds in vertical and horizontal lines, the idea is to place the object of importance on one of those thirds. For example, this bird is on the one third vertical line on our right here. And notice all that space to the left of the bird. That's also called negative space. So we photographer didn't center the bird, the photographer intentionally placed the bird on the right vertical third. Okay. This one is a vertical shot or portrait mode shot where you're turning the camera uh, on its side and notice that the eyes are on the, the horizontal top third there and notice that also, the, the girl is, um, her head is also right down that vertical left third as well. Here you see, the, again, the frame divided up into thirds. Um, you have the tree at the bottom left there, uh, where the vertical and the horizontal lines um, intersect, and the placement of that tree uh, was right there strategically placed on that lower uh, left third. Placement of the person here standing on the edge here of the seawall placed on a third. Notice that the horizon isn't also in the middle, it's a, it's a slightly below center. So that's all intentional as well. What you're trying to do is is split up the frame so nothing is truly in the center. Uh, that includes even you know your surroundings in this shot. You're paying attention to not only your your subject matter but the background as well. Subjects placed on the left uh, vertical third, and for fashion purposes, then all that negative space on the right that could be used for uh, content, copy, description of the clothing uh, brand, etc. The next uh, so-called rule of composition would be leading lines. This is where you use um, architectural or natural elements that will help guide uh, the viewer through the photograph. What is leading the viewer here in this case? It is this pier. Okay, it's, it's leading us from the right um, all the way to the left to the end of the pier that's the leading line. But notice, is the pier leading us to the center of the frame? It is not, it's leading us to a third. So in this image, you have at least a couple of compositional rules at play here. You have the leading lines and it's leading us to a third. Notice that the horizon is not in the center as well. It's, it's off center, on the, kind of close to the top third. Okay. 
Here is an example of leading lines. You have several lines that are leading here. You have the bench that's leading the line, and you have the uh, the fence that's also leading us to uh, eventually Brooklyn Bridge, and then Brooklyn Bridge is leading us out uh, into the city there. Leading lines again, these armchairs, these, this set of chairs are leading us to this woman sit, seated at the, I would say, second to the last chair there. And guess what? She's also placed on the third. So these are multiple uh, compositional rules within one shot. Leading lines, this is uh, taking a picture of a building uh, from directly beneath it, you're looking straight up. Now, in this case, the, the leading lines are leading us actually to the center of the frame, which is kind of breaking the so-called rule. But once you understand what these rules are doing, uh, you could start breaking them. But notice that I do have uh, another lead, uh, market, I'm sorry, compositional element here, which would be the leading lines rule. Okay. <clears throat> the next... Uh, compositional rule would be something called filling the frame and that what this is is that you fill your entire frame with your subject matter and there's nothing else really um, within the frame but that subject matter in this case the photographer was able to get close enough probably with a macro lens to get focus on this flower that it pretty much covered the entire frame we don't really see anything else but this flower, hence filling the frame. Another example, this is a detail shot of a vehicle. Uh, we know it's a vehicle because the detail of it is a license plate and the trunk handle. We don't, we don't see the tires, we don't see the, the windshield, the, the windows, the doors even. All we see is this portion of the trunk and not even the entire trunk and the entire frame is filled. We don't see the street, we don't see anything else. So if you even look at um, cars, uh, brochures for brand new cars, or even go on the internet and look, look, at these, uh, look at these cars, like say you're shopping for a new car, you'll see the images on there. They have what's called detail shots of the car. You'll have images that kind of give you like the shot of the interior, uh, specific portions of the car, as opposed to the entire um, wide angle of, of the car. So these are what's called <coughs> filling the frame. Here's another example of uh, filling the frame, and that is uh, this elephant. Uh, I, so there is, some see, there is some of the scenery in, in the shot, but um, most of this frame is being filled by this elephant, and in fact, it's actually looking like this elephant's coming right at us. Right? It even gives us that kind of feel as if we're right there really close up to the elephant. Filling the frame. Um, here we have uh, the structure of, of uh, Brooklyn Bridge filled with the frame. But what other elements do we have in this shot besides filling the frame? Look at all those lines. Leading lines, right? You have leading lines that's kind of going towards the top third leading us there, and it's kind of a rule of thirds too. We have the top of that um, bridge at the top third there, filling up two thirds of this shot. So you got at least three compositional elements all in one photograph. Patterns and texture. This is another compositional rule that you can look for. And the idea of this is that you're looking for something that's repetitive. Uh, whether it's in nature or artificial or, or human-made. Uh, and, and if you notice here, the photographer is filling the frame. Uh, in this tire shop, we don't see customers, we don't see the mechanics. Um, all we see is just a bunch of tires and nothing else in the frame. So the repeating pattern here and texture are the tire, the, the tread of these tires. That's the texture and patterns. And it's also uh, filling in the frame because... Uh, we don't see anything else in the shot. 
Here is uh, a shot of texture that looks like probably somewhere by tide pools, somewhere by by water possibly, um, and you get all this jagged, sharp edged texture off of this uh, natural element here from from this this landscape from all these rocks. A lot of texture there. This one's about patterns. Okay, this is this almost doesn't even look real anymore. This is it's architecture, um, mostly filled in the frame with all of these sort of uh, balconies, uh, with these arches. You know, the the arches are and the fences are are the patterns that are repetitive in this shot. Here we have texture. We have the human uh, cupcake with sprinkles on it. And if you're wondering, yes, those are peeps on her hair. So the texture is on her face with the sprinkles. Uh, if you notice, what other elements are on this shot besides uh, texture? If you guess thirds, it's definitely there. We have her on the third, and you have that spatula frosting on the third that she's looking at. That was a fun shoot. Another composition element is something called framing. And whether you're using natural or artificial elements, you are trying to frame what is important in your scene. In this case, what is, what is, what's the framing, uh, what is being used uh, for the framing technique? There are several things. If you guess the trees, that is correct. It's, uh, it's a natural element that is framing the, the couple walking on the path. You also have these leaves that are also framing them. Okay. And the grass, you can also argue that too. So you have framing there. What else, what other compositional elements do you see in here? Lines. Leading lines, these, uh, these trees are all leading us towards them. If you also included texture, texture of the leaves, the grass, that's also part of it as well. And of course, rule of thirds. They may be in the center, but they're in the bottom third. Right? What is that, like four elements of, of, of compositional elements all in one shot? And if you think about this shot and look at it, it's a very simple shot. But... If you think, if you break down the compositional elements, that's how it, uh, it it works well. It's so simple, but yet it it you break it down, it does. That's how, that's why it's working well because all these elements uh, going with it. Here's another example of framing. Okay. Um, also, I, I don't want you to get confused with the idea of framing and filling the frame. Okay, filling the frame is you getting close enough where it's all it is is about that uh, object like the, the trunk of the car the flower um, elephant this framing is looking for man-made or, or human-made or natural elements that are kind of creating a like almost like a picture frame in this case the frame is the entrance to this cave let me ask you how how did this photographer expose for this shot this was not nothing nothing special is needed to get this exposure what you do is if this is, is a cave there, okay, the, photog the photographer's in this cave right now, the photographer could easily have stepped out of the cave and just get an exposure reading of the scene. Looks like a sunny 16 day to me, maybe partly cloudy, maybe an F11 day, right? Or just use the meter while looking outside at the sailboat, then step into the cave and ignore what the meter is telling you because the meter may say, oh, it's getting dark now because of the edges of the frame. It may give you a different reading. But you, do, you completely ignore that because you just expose for your main object. And then you take the picture. Because you're in the cave, you're out, you're out of the sun, um, and you're looking at something that's in complete sun, you have two comp um, different exposures um, within the same shot. One of them is going to be properly exposed because you pre-exposed it and then the other one is is severely underexposed because you're inside the cave but that's okay because you wanted that effect to happen you can try this at home you don't need to fly out to the caribbean to do this you can on, during normal daylight hours um, turn all the lights off inside your house 
and open your windows and point your camera out the window and just do a proper exposure and then back up allowing to see the window frame right? uh, and you could achieve something like this where it's just going to be dark on the interior of your house but outside the window it's properly exposed here's another example of framing this is under the pier um, in Kauai at Hanalei uh, Hanalei Pier you have the foundations of this pier uh, as the um, element that's framing uh, in this particular image. It's, it's repeated uh, all throughout this image, so that's like a pattern as well, right? That's, that's the second composition element. There's leading lines in here, that's the third one. There's rule of thirds because the end of the sort of tunnel here is on the top third, okay? Texture is one you can see that texture on the uh, on the structure there as well. Simple image uh, in terms of what you're looking at, but then you add all these compositional elements. You're you're moving your frame accordingly. You're moving your camera to get all these elements um, all correct within your viewfinder. Framing here. What do we have that's that's being that's a, that's framing that's used as a, as a frame. We have first of all the cars on both sides of the street that could be used as framing framing the people that are at the end of the street crossing the street. You have the buildings also that are sort of framing the bridge. You got texture on the cobblest cobblestone road as well. Rule of thirds: the people are on the bottom third. Here, you got a frame within a frame within a frame. You got the penny tile as an exterior frame. Then you've got the bathtub as another frame. Then you've got the milk in the bathtub framing uh, this torso uh, that's in the bathtub. All right? And you can even argue that the skin is framing the tattoo. Right? Frame, frame, frame. Another um, element in composition is called depth. Do not confuse this with depth of field, which is the amount of objects that are, appear to be in focus or that are sharp in your scene. Depth is the idea of having a foreground, middle ground, and a background that are all relatively in focus. And it's sort of, it's, in, it's, it's photographing a scene that kind of goes into infinity in the background. It doesn't end, um, it doesn't seem to end, it just keeps going. So you have a foreground here with the street, low, the, with the street there on, on the bottom, middle ground with uh, some of the buildings there, and then it just keeps going on in the background of the mountain range. This is uh, what's called depth. It, it's giving us sort of a three-dimensional quality with a two-dimensional um, medium. Essentially photography is two dimensions. You're going to make a print of this, but we're, you know, how do you make it three dimensional? This is one way to do it uh, using depth, having a foreground, middle ground, and something that goes sort of in, on the infinity in the background. Here's another example of depth. Foreground, middle ground, and then it just keeps going. We can't really see the end. And we have like a rule of thirds where the tree is placed, right? The horizon isn't quite in the center, it's a little off center. And we got a lot of texture here and patterns, right? So the idea of this depth, you're gonna wanna use a deeper depth of field, meaning a higher f-stop number, you know, f8, f11, f16. Remember, the greater the depth of field, uh, you're gonna, you, you're trying to achieve more things in focus. So. So when, when shooting this uh, type of compositional rule, think about your f-stop. Don't go for a shallow depth of field, go for a deeper depth of field. Notice that it seems like the, the canoe, the river, and the mountain range seem to be in somewhat relative acceptable focus. Right? It's a deeper depth of field. But don't confuse you know, depth of field with this concept of depth. It's just the same word. But depth, again, we're, what we're trying to convey is this sort of three-dimensional quality in your scene.
Here's a picture of Fenway. Um, although it does end, you can see the other side of the stadium, but you get the sense of place here. It's kind of immense. Um, it isn't like, uh, you know, a small location like the interior of a car. It, this is like a stadium. So this does account for depth, foreground, middle ground, and some background off into the distance. And then finally, perspective. If you're wondering how I was able to get that shot of the of the frame within the frame within the frame, uh, this is how that was done. I had some two by fours, a couple of them stacked on top of my uh, bathtub in my old place. They had this beautiful penny tile work in the bathroom from the 1930s, I believe. And I just did a top down shot with that is real milk. Uh, it's powdered milk, but it is real milk. It's a mixture of water and the powdered milk. And I took a picture of this uh, subject, uh, my friend uh, Monica Orozco, in my series called Tattoos and Milk. You can see that on my website uh, at rollins.com if you're interested uh, to see the rest of this series. But perspective, going back to this, perspective is something you're going to apply to all of your uh, elements, meaning what point of view are you capturing this image from? Are you capturing it from your standing height? Are you standing, but you're pointing your camera down? Or did you go up a little higher? Did you climb a, a set of stairs? Did you go to the top floor of the building on the rooftop and then take a picture of the, of the street scene? That is your perspective. What is your perspective of, of this, of your shot? And then you also have to apply one of the elements. So you can start out with this. Where are you standing for this shot? And then apply one of those elements. So, for example, this, uh, the perspective of this was you climbing, me climbing up this hill so I can see this winding road, right? The elements of photography, of composition, are leading lines. This, this road is leading us through the valley. You've got texture of this hill and you you've got depth foreground middle ground all the way to the end and you've got rule of thirds this road is leading us to a third okay but none of that would have been achieved if i shot this at street level maybe i would have been able to get some but this this actually is whole kind of bird's eye view just climbing up taking a few minutes to climb up a hill to see this uh gives us a different perspective of the scene this one, the perspective on this one was me standing on a bench similar to the one in the shot. So that way I could see the, the, the benches properly and I could see the fence line um, not inter, intersect with uh, Brooklyn Bridge there. Because uh, if I were to be standing, um, that the bridge may have intersected into the fence. So I had to stand up a little bit to separate uh, the two. This one, I'm actually low to the ground because the lens is kind of close to the arm chair uh, right there. Um, I'm sorry, the chair arms. And so it's just a little lower and allowing me to get these leading lines of chair arms to, to the subject that's on a third. This one, I'm just right against the building pointing the camera straight up. for the leading lines um, compositional element. This one, I lowered the camera slightly and I'm, I'm very close to the boat. This one, the camera is on the ground, literally. If you think about it, look at the cars. Doesn't look like I would be standing um, to get that picture. I'm very, very low to the ground. So this is from the point of view of like, you know, of a, of, of a pet possibly, you know, what, what is the, what does the world look like from a dog's point of view, right? That, that low to the ground. So in review for composition, you've got rule of thirds, leading lines, filling the frame, which is you getting close as possible 
or filling, allowing the object to fill your your frame because it could be a large object like a building or even a, or a car. Patterns and texture, framing, not to be confused with fill the frame. Framing is finding elements that would actually frame your subject. Depth, which is a foreground, middle ground, and a background that seems to keep going on forever. And then perspective is you figuring out where your point of view is going to be and then selecting one of these uh, compositional, more than one or more of these elements. So perspective is where are you standing? And where, where how are you, where are you pointing your, where, where are you pointing your camera? All right, that is composition. And so now that you've seen this, from this point forward, you should be able to create uh, amazing and stunning shots. No more boring shots from this point forward, right? Right.